what's going on everybody happy Wednesday out there and we've got a pretty busy video today with a very active pattern going into our Thanksgiving so again we're really going to break down kind of what's going on right now out there as well as what is shaping up to be a major storm system to likely impact much of the East Coast going just in time for the busiest part of travel season into early and into the middle part of next week so again very active stuff and maybe even some more kind of uh, continuing of this active pattern after that going into the last week of November. So again, a lot to break down in today's video. And uh, with that said, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. And if you like the video, make sure to hit that like button and share the video with maybe some of your friends and family you might have uh, that could be potentially affected by the storm system going into next week. And especially with so many travel plans this time of year, really uh, good to kind of get that word out on what we're expecting in the weather world here in the future. Um, alrighty, well, I guess with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it because I don't want to take up too much of your time here. So we'll start with satellite imagery as we normally do here on the channel. And again, uh, this is storm number one that we're dealing with right now off the Gulf Coast. So if you're in a place like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, especially, have you seen some rain today? This is just one storm system uh, that is eventually going to work its way on out and make room for that second storm system going into early next week. So Again, right now in a lot of the southeast, we're seeing pretty cloudy weather uh, from the Carolinas even up into Virginia all the way down again into sections of Texas and the entire state of Florida socked into those clouds and even some rain for a lot of people. And you can see this thing spinning away very clearly on satellite here. Uh, not hard to find where the center of low pressure is. Now, as we kind of uh, move ahead into time, this will continue to move over the Florida Peninsula and begin to phase with another system off the coast of Florida and eventually ride up the East Coast. The good news, though, is uh, I'm not expecting too many, excuse me, too many direct impacts with this storm system as it's really going to be pretty far offshore by the time we get into this weekend. So that's the good news there. Alrighty, so taking a look at radar imagery out here, again, most of the rain that we're seeing is down here into the southeast. Also, another storm system off the coast of California, helping to bring in some Pacific moisture into you uh, folks down in SoCal, seeing some of that rain out that way. But outside of these two storm systems, really all clear for much of the United States uh, at this point in time. But again, that will likely change as we go into the future. So going to go ahead and zoom in here uh, on the southeast a little bit more for you just to break this down. Uh, again, this is the center of that low pressure and you'll notice it almost looks a bit tropical. It has a chance to turn into a tropical system, uh, but especially whenever it phases off the coast of Florida here with a new storm is whenever we'll have that best chance of seeing some tropical development. But uh, either way, impacts remain the same. A whole lot of rain for us folks here into Florida and even sections of Georgia uh, and some cloud cover for other folks in the southeast as this continues to kind of churn away a little bit here. Alrighty, so again, let's go ahead and uh, move this ahead into time for you into this afternoon and evening. Again, the heaviest of this rain is falling in South Florida for places like Fort Myers down towards uh, Fort Lauderdale, the Keys, and even into the Miami area. Lake Okeechobee seeing a lot of rain out of this thing and a potential for a couple inches of rain to fall as this continues to just bring a plume of Gulf and Caribbean moisture northward into the Florida Peninsula. Now, outside of there, uh, rain still falling, although lighter for us folks here in Georgia, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle where uh, we're just seeing a little bit less lift here so um, you know more of kind of a dreary just kind of drizzly rain and really not helping to put too much of a dent in that drop that we're seeing out in this part of the country. Now, uh, as we move this ahead into later tonight, again, those folks that are seeing rain right now likely to continue. Uh, by the time you're waking up tomorrow morning, expect that rain to continue for a lot of folks through the Florida Peninsula. Uh, as we also begin to see going into tomorrow morning, maybe some of this kind of wind can come in off the Atlantic and bring some rain into uh, places like Savannah, Charleston, maybe as far inland as a place like Augusta and Columbia, South Carolina, maybe seeing a little bit of rain tomorrow morning. But unfortunately, uh, we've just got really strong high pressure anchored over the mid-Atlantic right now. So that's bringing a lot of uh, kind of convergence aloft and that sinking air is really preventing much of this rain from falling uh, much further north in the I-20 corridor unfortunately because uh, this part of the country is where we really could use that rain but this storm system just isn't going to do it. The good news though relief on the horizon going into next week as that secondary storm system really begins to move in. Alright, going into tomorrow afternoon, I think most of the rain that falls tomorrow during the day will be through the state of Florida, again from a place like Ocala down towards Tampa, up uh, into Gainesville, into Jacksonville, southern Georgia seeing some light rain as well, but again the heaviest of that rain over the peninsula uh, from east coast to west coast tomorrow afternoon before going into the overnight hours on Thursday and into the early morning hours of Friday, you'll notice uh, this storm really begins to finally crank up off the east coast uh, and that rain should begin to dissipate over the Florida peninsula before a cold front begins to swing on through 
for other folks in the country going into our Friday and Saturday. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that cold front as we move this ahead in time going later on into this week. Again, rain falling right now into the southeast, but here comes that cold front going into uh, starting really Thursday overnight. You'll see some of this rain breaking out into sections of the Midwest from Iowa, uh, Missouri, up through Illinois, uh, into sections of Michigan, Wisconsin, also seeing some of that light rain. Uh, and that will continue to track eastbound going into the overnight hours of Thursday and into early Friday, you'll notice a pretty nice shield of rain here, although unfortunately uh, it's moving pretty quick. So uh, we definitely will likely see some rain for much of the Ohio River Valley uh, into the Great Lakes, even into sections of the Mississippi River Valley uh, before this front kind of swings on through. And this front isn't too potent. So, um, you know, a lot of this rain that falls will be quick and don't expect too much of a temperature drop behind this front uh, just because, again, not the strongest of fronts, but definitely enough to cause some lift and see some of this moisture uh, kind of work into sections of of the country and you'll also notice as we go uh, way out here into our Saturday uh, that storm system off the East Coast continuing to strengthen, but unfortunately, uh, most of that rain shield staying offshore with the storm. So uh, places in North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia that could really use some rain. I know we're kind of been praying for it out here, but unfortunately, this just isn't going to really be our storm system. Alrighty, so uh, we've kind of taken a look at this first storm off the coast of the Gulf moving into the Atlantic and that cold front. Now let's kind of dive into our Thanksgiving week forecast now where, again, things look very interesting. So I'm going to start us off here with our European ensemble members at 500 millibars. Uh, so what this map is going to really help show us is where do we have ensemble support uh, for some troughing. And that's going to be very important because where we see that troughing is where we're likely going to see, uh, one, a storm system develop kind of on the right-hand side of that trough, and two, some cold air funnel behind that. So um, again, very important for that forecast going into Thanksgiving week. So again, right now it does a pretty good picture at, uh, you know, showing what we're expecting over the next couple of days, troughing uh, with that one storm system off the East Coast while we have high pressure again anchored kind of off much of uh, the East Coast right now, or excuse me, into the Northeast, bringing in that cooler, drier air for most folks right now. Now, moving this ahead in time, uh, you'll notice that there's that front that moves on through later this week and pretty well defined here on our map. Uh, you can see that pretty easily here. That swings on through. Uh, and by the time we go into early next week or kind of the start of our Thanksgiving week, uh, you'll notice some really big blue colors kind of come in out of California and into the Southern Plains. So what we're likely going to have here is two pieces of energy that work in tandem. One piece of energy kind of here into the polar jet stream while we have this other piece of energy into the subtropical jet. Now these two are likely going to interact somewhere over the Southern Great Plains and where that happens is where we likely see cyclogenesis to begin with very strong low pressure forming out here and eventually working into the East Coast and that's when things really are going to go downhill weather-wise unfortunately uh, right into our Tuesday time frame and Wednesday time frame as you can see these dark blue colors showing up here in the East Coast indicating a very strong troughing or bending of those temperatures in the atmosphere uh, really shrinking uh, those first 500 millibars of the atmosphere uh, down into shallower depths going into uh, the middle part of next week so that's going to be very important and again this is just the Euro ensemble members again pretty uh, potent on that troughing showing the potential for uh, some pretty big fluctuations in the jet stream now how about our gfs ensemble members again another very important model again they agree on this weekend's storm system and cold front and sure enough here comes next week and another big area of blue even stronger on our gfs ensembles uh, going into the middle part of next week. So again, you'll notice this very kind of bendy shape in the jet stream here with uh, these dark blue colors. Again, that tells me the atmosphere is shrinking. It's getting colder. Uh, and with that, we're going to see plenty of divergence on one side, and that is going to lead to a very strong cyclogenesis at the surface and uh, low pressure really beginning to crank up. And that combined with maybe some cold air could bring some snow and with some warm air, maybe some severe weather. So again, a lot of details to iron out here. And again, you'll notice the GFS really just continues to crank this troughing going into our Thanksgiving day before finally kind of calming down a little bit uh, going into uh, Thanksgiving weekend. So we'll definitely have to watch out for that. 
Alrighty, so that's just kind of showing the 500 millibar map. Now let's kind of take a look here uh, at what these models are projecting at the surface. Again, it's kind of, you know, easy to talk about big meteorological terms, but what does this really mean for what the weather's going to be like where you're at? Well, our GFS model here, our latest model from this afternoon, again, this weekend, here comes that cold front swinging on through. Pretty easy to spot here on the map as that swings on through. Uh, if I could draw an arrow, that would make it even better, probably. <laughs> uh, and again, here's that storm system off the coast riding up the coast. So... Uh, this weekend, uh, expect some breezy conditions through the northeast as that uh, you know storm system is just off the coast and maybe even some snow for you folks up into New Hampshire and Maine uh, with that weekend storm and front. But again, likely moves out of here pretty quick before really impacting our friends out towards Nova Scotia and Newfoundland going into Saturday and Sunday. So again, a bit of a lull going into most of uh, Sunday afternoon, although expect colder temperatures in the northeast after that front swings on through, especially compared to us folks in the southeast where uh, really temperatures should stay pretty steady even into this weekend after that front passes, but definitely some colder weather into the northeast going into this weekend after that front. But again, here comes early next week. Here comes that storm system you can see on the GFS beginning to crank up here towards that divergence zone of that trough. Uh, we'll start likely as, you know, not too strong of a storm out towards Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. But what this will do is begin to bring some uh, moisture northward and with that some uh, very much needed rainfall for a lot of areas of the country out here. So again, that's going into Monday afternoon. You'll notice the storm still developing over the Southern Great Plains before uh, going into our Tuesday morning and afternoon. Uh, this low really begins to strengthen and look at how tight these isobars out here. Very windy conditions, very cold air funneling in behind this low pressure system as indicated by our blue lines here on this map. Uh, and that combined with plenty of warm air out in front is going to be a very dynamic system here that we're dealing with. Uh, likely pressures getting well below 1000 millibars into the 900 millibars over the Tennessee and Ohio River Valleys going into Tuesday afternoon. So uh, that's going to lead to a couple things. One, very windy conditions. Two, uh, very rainy conditions for some folks. Three, potentially some severe weather if we can get just enough instability out here uh, into the southeast. A uh, lot of wind energy here to work with. So we could be dealing with severe weather. Also, we still have high pressure with cold air from the front beforehand that we see this weekend supplying cold air into the northeast and some of the higher elevations. That could lead to an icy mess and maybe even a snowy mess for some folks going into, again, a very big time for travel. Uh, this is going into Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning. Uh, again, you'll notice very heavy rainfall into sections of the southeast, uh, very breezy conditions, and even snowy conditions into sections of the interior northeast and into the Great Lakes going right in time for uh, just the day before Thanksgiving. here. So again, a very potent storm system here. And you'll notice, again, uh, by the time we're getting into the day before Thanksgiving, very strong uh, cold air advection behind the storm system is going going to mean uh, that we see, you know, potentially very below average temperatures and even northwest flow uh, into the higher elevations as far south as the North Carolina mountains. So a very dynamic system here. You'll notice precipitation shield on this thing stretching all the way from Canada all the way down towards um, the sections of the Bahamas. So very big storm system here on our latest GFS model. And it's really going to wreak all kinds of havoc on those travel plans. Uh, but we really still need to iron out exactly what those details are. So uh, that's the GFS. Let's take a look at the European model now. So as we kind of move this ahead, again, pretty similar story this weekend that the GFS showed. Uh, and once again, the Euro here shows a storm system developing going into early next week into the Southern Plains. Uh, and a very similar story to the GFS. Uh, really begins to kind of bomb out here, uh, get very strong with uh, plenty of wind energy and uh, plenty of precipitation over much of the East Coast and potentially even plenty of wintry precipitation going into the middle part of next week, although the European model here is a bit warmer overall uh, with this storm system as a whole. So again, uh, two very similar stories here. What we do know and all the models agree on is some sort of storm that's going to have very big impacts into much of the East Coast next week. Timing, we're pretty good on that as well, likely uh, starting around Monday, Tuesday, lasting into Wednesday, Thursday as it tracks east and northbound. Uh, those are the things that we're pretty confident on. What we're not so confident on is who's going to see maybe some winter precipitation, who's maybe going to see some severe weather, and uh, who's really just going to see some good old-fashioned rain. Um, so those are the details we still need to iron out, but definitely feeling confident that we're going to get a big-time storm system through much of the East Coast going here into our Thanksgiving week. So again, if you have travel plans, now's the time to maybe start thinking about those, thinking about how that may be impacted, how maybe you should prepare for that uh, if you have some plans there right before Thanksgiving to maybe get get somewhere uh, into a different part of the country here into the East Coast. So 
Again, uh, that's really going to be the biggest deal here are those travel disruptions. Now, I know a lot of folks this time of year really start thinking about snowfall. Well, could we see some snow with this storm system? Yeah, absolutely we could. Uh, unfortunately, though, again, still really needing to iron that out. But what I will say is the best chance of seeing snow right now, I think, is going to be into sections of the interior northeast, uh, sections of the Great Lakes here into the UP of Michigan, maybe even into uh, the kind of uh, western shores there of Michigan, and also the higher terrains of the Appalachians from North Carolina all the way up into the Virginias, I think have a pretty good shot at maybe some northwest flow on the back end of this and maybe even some snow or ice on the front end. Uh, but I definitely don't see uh, many places getting an all snow event out of this, at least in the United States. Canada could see a bit of a different story there, but it uh, really looks like a bit of a mess overall with this storm system and it's going to be quite a difficult forecast for a lot of different locations. And as we get a little bit closer, we'll definitely time that out better and get those better details. But we're still about a week away from uh, the storm really having the max impacts. Alrighty, so now because of all of this, we do feel pretty confident in some above average precipitation along the East Coast, as you can probably imagine with this big storm system stretching uh, across much of the eastern half of the country here next week. So again, feeling confident in that and also on the backside of the storm system due to that troughing bringing in some cooler air for just about everyone east of the Rockies here just in time for our Thanksgiving and the weekend after Thanksgiving. So again, this is what we feel confident in. Of course, still need to iron out the details, but um, when all is said, and done, we definitely have a big time storm coming next week for millions of Americans. So definitely uh, keeping that on kind of the back burner and thinking about that. The good news though is overall for most folks outside of maybe uh, the Florida Peninsula where we're seeing some rain right now, we're going to have a pretty nice stretch between now and this next storm system. So uh, again, uh, a lot of things to iron out, but feeling very confident that some very active weather is on the way. And again, I didn't uh, show it in any of the maps, but after this storm system, there's even some signs that maybe we continue this very active subtropical jet bringing bringing multiple low pressure systems through the southeast and maybe even into the northeast as they ride up the coast. And if that pattern continues into December, could definitely be dealing with maybe a couple pretty good snowstorms for some folks here in the east coast. So uh, again, definitely watching all of that. And now with that said, again, I do appreciate you hanging around there or watching the video. If you have any questions, definitely consider asking me in the comments. I'll try my best to get to answering those as soon as possible. And of course, just thanks again uh, for all of your support. As you know, again, I'm a pretty busy guy, so I apologize for kind of the very sporadic upload schedule. Uh, anyway, though, with that said, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time.